Hey, in this video, I'll be refinishing the wheels on my NB Miata. The wheels that are on the car right now are the original five spoke sport wheels. They're silver, but they're all beat up and they have a ton of curb rash. And a lot of times I run a set of race wheels and tires on the Miata and they're, they're wide and they're really aggressive and they're just not appropriate for normal daily driving. And instead of buying an entire new set of wheels, I thought, man, I'm just gonna go with the cheapest solution and just refinish the wheels that I already have on the car because the geometry is obviously perfect for the geometry of the car because they're the OEM wheels. I'm gonna take those wheels and I'm gonna paint them satin black so I don't have to worry about brake dust. And additionally, the wheels have these huge chunky center caps that I don't really like because it kind of messes up the whole visual appeal of the center of the wheel. So I got custom smaller center caps. They're actually just hole plugs made on Etsy. They're, they're a few bucks a piece. They look really good and I'm running extended studs and uh, lug nuts on my Miata. It looks awesome. Um, so this is just gonna be the start to finish process of me fixing the curb rash, fixing those scratches and then uh, finishing and then painting the wheels. So start to finish that whole process. I'm gonna be posting some future Miata content in the future. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, please consider subscribing. Enjoy the video. Starting off with 100 grit and a sanding block. After hitting it with the sanding block, then I'm gonna to switch to a 100 grit with just my hands. All you're trying to do is rough this surface up so paint will stick to it. And there are gonna be some imperfections and I'll show you how to fix those in a second. But for now, try to just sand down everything you can. So if there's an imperfection, try to sand it out. Don't put too much effort into it. If you can't get it out, I'll show you how to fix it in a minute here. Hit it with the vacuum. Then hit it with some compressed air. I didn't know this before, but the OEM wheels are made by Anki. You might laugh at my face shield, but this would have hit me directly in the eyeball if I wasn't wearing it. I'm just lightly roughing up the backside. This part might not be necessary, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Why do something if you're not gonna do it all the way? I'm gonna use brake cleaner on this and then a wire brush and just get this old tire residue off here.
I'm to the point where I'm gonna fill in a couple of these chip marks around the wheel. I labeled them with a black marker and I'm gonna use this Bondo, metal reinforced Bondo to fill these in and then sand it down, get it all smooth and then work on it a little bit more and then it's gonna be ready to primer. As you can see, I'm just putting this Bondo on with my finger. It's been about 25 minutes and this stuff is dry, so it's ready to sand. And it's very difficult to sand. This is the metal reinforced Bondo. And the last wheel I did, the Bondo was stronger than the metal material around it, the aluminum around it. So I was sanding the Bondo and the aluminum was going away, the Bondo was not going away. So just be careful, take your time, uh, keep feeling it and making sure it's smooth. I'm just gonna go around this whole wheel, every single spot of it, and feel it with my hands, and I'm still wearing the gloves, and I'm still on the 100 grit sandpaper, but I'm trying to figure out if there are any ridges, rough spots, there's a little rough spot here. I'm just gonna knock it down with the 100 grit sandpaper before I move on to the finer stuff. Refinishing wheels is the labor of love. You get what you put into it. Everything feels good. I'm gonna hit it with 320 grit now, just on the front face. I'm just gonna leave the rest of it rough. The paint will stick to it better. I got the gloves off and I'm gonna run over it again with the 100 grit. I'll knock down if I find any really bad spots with the 100, and then I'll go back over that with the 320. But really, I'm just trying to find any little bumps I find, and I'll take that 320 and just smooth it out. This thing is feeling smooth everywhere. The next thing to do is to spray it down with some isopropyl alcohol. And some people use tack cloths. I just use shop rags. I have better success. And I feel like there's less cloth particles stuck to my surface when I'm done. So I'm just gonna use shop rags. For these sunken in portions, I just ignore these because you can't see these at all and they'd be extremely difficult to clean out all the way. I just leave them. For the plastic caps, you don't want to go too crazy with them because they're made out of plastic and if you hit it with 
high grit sand or low grit sandpaper that will turn all gummy and basically ruin this part. So you just want to take the 320 and just make it not shiny anymore. It's probably good. Hit these with alcohol too. They're ready to go. For primer, your first coat, you want it to be really light, just so the next coat sticks to it really well. And if you make it anything but really light, it's gonna run like crazy. So just dust it on there, and don't worry about getting full coverage yet. Let that first coat dry for maybe five, 10 minutes. For the second coat, you can put it on a little bit thicker. That's all the primer I'm gonna put on the backside and I'll be putting a little bit more on the caps but then I'm gonna flip the wheel over and add a lot more to the front side. The back side, I don't care as much about because it's hard to see. You never see the back side of the wheel anyways, but the front side is where it's really important. Again, let this dry for five to 10 minutes before touching the wheel. Same as the back side, you want to just lay down a really light coat initially on the front side. Lay down the next thicker coat. I'm running out of paint, but paint is money. Gotta make it last. All right, that's about empty. That last coat was not thick enough, so I had to get a new can. All right, that should be good. After the last coat of primer, let it sit for a couple of hours. Here's how that looks all primered. And it's ready for paint. Now for the paint, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna paint the back of the wheel first and then flip it around and paint the front of the wheel. But I don't wanna scuff the front surface up, so I'm gonna lay some tissue down or some towel down so it doesn't scratch it up. It's pretty difficult to avoid runs when you're trying to paint inside the wheel. And I got a couple of small runs here and I'll fix that in a minute. I'm gonna wet sand it out. I'm pretty impatient 
I'm not going to sit around and wait for this wheel to dry, so I'm going to flip it over and get started on the front side. Just be careful not to touch any of the wet spots. And be sure to remove the shot cloth. For the paint, it's the same strategy as the primer, start off light. I'll post the paint that I'm using in the description of this video. It's made by BHT, it's high temp wheel paint, polyurethane, satin black. Well, that was a really productive teams meeting. I let it dry for a little while and then I wet sanded out the runs on the back side of the wheel. And I was not using alcohol, I was just using water here because the alcohol was interfering with the polyurethane paint before the paint had cured all the way. I touched up a couple of spots on the front side as well. Sorry about the noise, right when I started filming this scene, a crew showed up and started drilling a hole in my yard for a new sewer pipe. I'm in a team's meeting right now. Seriously. Here's that wheel. Get that center cap, pop it in. Check it out. I think I've outdone myself. Here's all four wheels. If you do this job, I do not recommend putting the center caps in first because I think they have to access that hole when they're balancing the tires. The paint could chip when they're removing the center caps. Here are the finished wheels with the tires all mounted and balanced. I decided to go with the Quadrac 5 tire. It's an all season tire. And the reason I went with this tire is because it's rated really highly in all conditions. In the summer conditions, it's also rated highly in the rain. It does not hydroplane easily. And then it can also be driven in the snow, which is an added benefit. And the reason I went with this tire is because I normally run the Miata with racing tires and really wide wheels. But I leave the Miata at my mom's house. And whenever she drives the car to work or anything like that, it seems like every time she drives it, it downpours rain so I just wanted a safer tire on the Miata normally.
Here's a wheel spacer trick I learned on my Miata. Take this one, put it right there and see how some of that hub sticks out. You can get another spacer. You have to make sure your first spacer is so thin that that's still sticking out. You get another spacer, a thicker one, and that's still concentric because of that raised part of that hub. You could get one big spacer, but they're hard to find. It's easier to find these thinner spacers, so I just use two and stack them. And because that part sticks up a little bit past that first spacer, it makes this whole thing concentric, and it makes it so you don't have your wheel out of alignment or unbalanced once you get everything back on. Here's how it looks with everything back together. Like I said before, normally I run this car with really wide racing wheels and tires and the ride quality is just terrible with that combination because the wheels rub on the sway bar and the wheels when you hit big bumps it just jars the whole car. With this wheel and tire setup, it's the OEM geometry. You can still hit big bumps and the car uh, you know, doesn't take these huge uh, shocks when you hit bumps. And also with this tire, since they're not as sticky as the race compound, it's kind of fun because you can chuck the car around and the back end kicks loose and the car is a little bit livelier. It's not as planted obviously as my racing setup, but it's still really fun to drive. The satin finish of this paint is awesome because you never have to get your wheels back to the shiny state they started at because they're not really that shiny. In other words, you don't have to clean your brake dust anymore. When I had the silver wheels, the OEM wheels, I was always cleaning the brake dust off and now it's a job I don't have to do anymore. I couldn't be happier with the Miata wheels, the finished OEM wheels. They look awesome and the car handles great, nothing rubs. It's obviously perfect geometry with everything OEM. And I don't even have the Miata here right now, so I guess the S2000 is gonna be the fill-in for the Miata. I hope it's, hope it's playing the part. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day.